What's up, guys? So we are here at Tiny Rig Co. We're here with Daniel and the guys. Everybody's renting away. Uh, so today we're going to be doing something a little different, something that I didn't do the last time when I built my last setup. Uh, if you haven't heard, I am switching over uh, from my Canopy Explorer and my tent, which is separated to a full system like Daniel has here. Uh, this is called the Canopy Camper. Correct. And uh, we're going to go over uh, a spec sheet um, that way in case one of you guys is interested in going with a similar setup, Daniel can walk you guys through um, exactly what needs to be done. Um, a little background. So when I got my first setup, I went pretty, pretty ham and uh, it wasn't, I got stuff that maybe wasn't even necessary. Uh, so this time around, I'm going to build it really slow and I hope the spec sheet um, just kind of yeah, I'll grab it. So it gives um, people an idea. Try to hold it up for you guys. So every <laughs> Alu Cab dealer, whether you come to Tiny Rig or OK Four Wheel Drive or any of the other ones out there, are gonna have this build sheet for you. Mm. And uh, most of their websites do as well. And you basically have each accessory that can go with the camper on here. Um, there's a front and a back. Um, and you can go through and basically I'm gonna walk you around the truck, you yeah. guys will see. And we'll point out, I'll show you the cost of each item. And then typically with uh, each item, right, there's an, an install cost that goes along with it. Right. Um, if there's certain items that you think you want to install yourself, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we'll build out like an estimate for you and shows you the price of kind of install and whatnot. Um, but for someone like you who wants to build it out as you go, rather than just have a fully built truck. Yep. Um, we'll go through and we'll say like, you know, these are the things that I think you, you really want to have, or you're really going to need. Um, these are things that I would add kind of in the next phase or so. Okay. Um, really cool thing about it is everything's modular. Yeah. So you can build as you go. You don't have to have a fully built one to start. Okay. Cool. Let's get into it. And uh, yeah, info, all that stuff for these guys will be down below. So uh, let's go. Let's do cool. it. You guys know I already know George. So I'm going to walk through this pretty much as if I don't know George and he's just a normal customer. Um, but you know, typically when I do talk to a customer, I kind of ask them what they're going to do, their camping style and whatnot, so that I understand maybe what they want and need. Um, so I'll just walk through some basic stuff. So obviously you're gonna delete the tailgate. Um, every canopy camper from here up, whether it's for a Gladiator or a Ranger or a Tacoma, is gonna be the exact same. Um, you have a five foot truck and uh, we also make a six foot one. Um, and then fit kit here. Uh, your install at Tiny Rig, you have an option for the advanced seal. So any gaps that are created from the fit kit um, into the bed and over time, like your bed, George, you've had a million different setups and so mm -hmm. your bed's kind of out of whack. So what we're going to do is once we install everything, it's going to kind of beef stuff up, but then we can seal all those gaps so that it's super sealed and super tight. So we lose the tailgate, makes it easier to get in and out. Um, but also it's going to seal the bed much better so that everything's clean inside. Uh, the door is, uh, it's lockable with kind of like a normal master lock. Um, so open it up and it's a container style latch. So when you do open the door, um, you have full access. You don't have to climb on the tailgate. Um, downside to that is a lot of people use a tailgate for cooking services. So we offer a full size drop table. Um, GP Factor makes this and uh, really, really nice. It's food grade stainless steel and it's got a bamboo cutting board option. So. George can make his ceviche right here. Um, and he can keep his Yucateca hot sauce up here. Um, and he can go out and do those cooking videos that he always does for you guys. Um, nice thing about this one is that it packs up super slim. So when you close the door and it's time to go to bed, it doesn't take up a bunch of room. Um, other place, right, could you get rid of that table? Maybe you're someone who snowboards, so you need a bigger table than that. And so if you follow me, George, up here, um, it's a really cool stealth little table option. Um, same table that you had in your canopy, and it's going to lock in and pull out. Right? So that same table that you have, George, we can move over to here. Um, I think everyone's probably already seen that, so I'm not going to pull it out and show them, but um, that's another really good option. So this is one I want to highlight because of where it's located on the truck. Um, it needs to be installed when you get it. That's one thing that would be extremely challenging to upgrade you to later on down the road. So, you know, if you're gonna build out a super basic camper, I recommend getting at least the table slide. If you can't afford the table now, just do the table slide. Um, and then we can add the table down the road when you're ready for it. Um, 
So you guys can see like I've got a shorter rack up here to fit the table and whatnot. Um, and it also, it's gonna close the gap on the roof line and look pretty good, so. Now question. Yeah. Will my rack be compatible with this or do I need to lose it? Um, on your front runner rack? Yeah. So we trimmed it down before to fit with your canopy. Yeah. I think we could probably trim it down again. Okay. Um, if not, these guys make racks that I've sent them measurements for each vehicle and like access cab, long bed, uh, short beds. And so they make it so that it's perfect size. Mm. Um, and we can get that and we can install it for you, but I think we can probably modify your front runner rack. Um, I know Ren with the Colorado has done that before. So that's a good option. Cool. Um, so we'll go back to the back of the truck again. Um, typically at this point with the customer, uh, I'm gonna pop everything up and show them kind of how quickly things open. So I keep this here. This has like a, my jet oil stove and some other stuff. It's the only storage box that I bring with me. And it's also my step. So that goes there. Typically with a bumper, you've got a place to step. This is my step. Um, so latches, again, you can lock these if you want. I've never felt the need, um, but pins to secure the lock and then pop it like a normal latch, just like the tent, same exact ones. And you have it on both sides. And then it's just a push up. And you wanna grab this cable right here and kind of tuck this somewhere. So I usually throw it in my rain gutter channel. Um, and then you can kind of just straighten these out or you can put the rain fly in there. Um, and so the roof's capable of holding 210 pounds. So you can still open it with snowboards up there, a kayak, something like that. Um, at this point, I think the lighting is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, George, but I'm gonna pop open the sides so we get more light. Um, and each camper comes standard with the doors that you see. Um, and George, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the phone because this is typically where the customer is gonna climb inside. Okay. And I'll record you and talk to you. Does that work? Sure. Cool. All right, so George, if you look in, mm -hmm. and you know how my stuff works already, but right. there's this small bed portion right here. So just flick your hand up, it's on a gas strut. It'll open really easy. Yep. And then, so this is the Goose Gear interior system. Yeah. Um, when I get in the camper, I move this forward and I'll turn the lights on in here too. That'll help a little bit. Um, and now you can climb up and get inside. And so you can see the, the sleeping area. So typically a customer would get to see that. George, you wanna show them kind of what that yeah. looks like? This place is massive. <laughs> so everything that you're looking at up there comes standard, right? So it's gonna come with the mattress. Um, it's gonna come with um, these zippered pockets that are right here. Um, and those zippered pockets have uh, USB ports for charging, 12 volt sockets, um, reading lights, and uh, you can plug things in and charge them up there. Um, the other side has the exact same thing. So each person out there sleeping, like you and you sell it, can you know, have your phones plugged in at night. And if one of you wants to read a book, <coughs> blinding the person, you can do that. Uh, and, uh, I do want, I mean, you have the tent already, so you know the material, right? But that's one of the other things I typically point out up there. Yeah. The screens are very similar. They're separate from the canvas. Um, you can see kind of how I put those away. I just roll them up and kind of zip them down. Yeah. Um, and then the other kind of unique thing about the canopy camper that uh, not really any other campers have out there is the way the bed moves up. So I'll trade you again. And uh, if you guys look, George, go ahead and uh, just, just keep standing and just lift the bed up. It's on a gas strut, guys. So you don't need to move any boards around or anything like that. Uh, you don't need to adjust your bedding. Like a George, pull it down again. And my bedding's in the exact same spot, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the things that's really, really nice. And I think uh, from an expectation standpoint, George, like you want to be able to kind of stand in here and let you sell a change and yeah. work easier with the baby. For sure. um, there's no setup of your bed. All the stuff fits in there. And I don't know if they could see, but I have memory foam pillows, uh, mm -hmm. King duvet cover, a uh, bunch of stuff up there. So um, you can leave that up, George. Dude, it's um, massive in here. So yeah. I'm 5'11", and this is, uh, it's pretty uh, spacious in here. So Goose Gear Sleep Platforms. So these they call these sleep platforms because if you do have a family, I'm going to throw it on wide, um, you can have some kiddos sleep, right? And they can go sideways when they're small, and when they're taller, you know, you can sleep diagonal, a six-foot person. Mm -hmm. um, but I like these a lot for storage. 
So you've seen kind of how I do it, George. A lot of times I'll have the sleep panels all the way in, so you get this big surface over here. Yeah. And now my bed's actually wider this way than it is long. Mm -hmm. And so like when we went to Ikea to buy some desks for the shop, I threw the desks all the way across. Okay. Um, and those are 60 inch desks and they fit. Um, so you actually get more width in your bed with the Goose Gear storage and with the camper on than you do otherwise. Um, these two panels, I pick these up and I put them up there. So on the five foot bed, you have a large overhang up there. So any duffel bags that are in your, your bed area can be put up there when you get to camp so that you guys can easily sit inside um, and hang out, right? So like one thing I can see for you in the future, or Yusela, would be having that other one here and having a really easy spot to change a diaper. Yeah. Um, so I think you, get, you can talk to them kind of about why you're moving, but I think that would be a, a really nice option at camp for you. So this is something that you recommend like off the bat? Not off the bat, no. This is, I mean, if you can afford it, right? But I would say like, as far as what do you have to start with? Yeah. Um, I recommend the table that we talked about over here. Um, and electrical is pretty much, I mean, and I, would, and I would even say a basic electrical setup. Mm -hmm. So like at Tiny Rig, we offer, we'll call it three packages. Yeah. And each package is upgradable to the next one. So we can start it off and basically just get you power for all your lights. Um, and then in the future we can expand that and we can do a red arc system with one solar panel or we can do a Victron with a single solar panel and then we can add a second solar panel and we can do the red arc BCDC and so like we can build upon it. Um, but I think as far as like what you need today, um, start with that, right? Cause you can't really install that later on. You can, but it's an absolute beast, um, because you have that gap, right? So like, this is a camper that you're not going to remove, um, unless you have to, unless you're selling the truck. Yeah. Um, you're gonna leave it on all the time, right? And part of that's because we seal it, but also it's just, it's not a slide in. Yeah. Um, screen kits are another common one that people like to start with. It usually keeps the wife really happy. Um, so you guys can see, I, I've removed the screen kit on that side. However, I do have it here. Um, and I've got it on the back door. Um, so like the back door, if we go over here, George, um, I can show them. So you have the screen here and it zips up and you've got Velcro. So if you undo the Velcro and let it fall, um, again, like you can change inside, keeping the door open, it's nice and easy. Or if it's bad weather, um, you know, you just drop the screen and you can still see out and it's gonna keep a lot of the wind out and keep all the dust out. Um, and it's two separate pieces. So like typically I have them kind of sandwiched together right now, but you can undo them and roll them up. So George, I don't know if you wanna Roll that back up for them. Come outside? Um, no, you can do it from the inside. That's usually how I do it. Right. Um, so we're leaving just the mesh? Yeah, you can do that. George is rolling up the, the back portion of it. Um, so again, you can sit inside the camper and uh, you want to pull those tabs out, George. And then you see the Velcro there. Yep. First time doing this, guys. So. He practiced a bunch of times off camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, and then you can you know zip it up and when you're at camp, you can leave everything open so it cools off. Um, some customers do have concerns with it being an aluminum black box. And uh, so it might hold a little bit of heat, it's going to, but uh, once you open everything up, it cools off quite a bit. So this one functions the exact same, George, and they have thought about kind of the light that's here. So there's a little Velcro opening so that the light still shines through when you close it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as kind of, you know, we were just talking about it um, off camera while the other customer was taking a look. Um, things that you should start with from the beginning. Um, so the value cap molly plates, I don't know if you want to jump out real fast. Yeah. Um, I'll show you those. We can talk about that. Hello. <laughs> I'm excited, guys. But I really... I was telling Daniel it's better to document it so I can show the wife and at the same time post a video for you guys and now that you guys get an idea um, what you can get the options. Yeah, so the the other item that I tell people to start with, part of it's cosmetic and then the other part of it is just from a functionality standpoint. Um, it's these rear molly plates. So again, this is another Alucad product. Um, that table I showed you is a GP Factor product. Um, GP Factor and Alucab work extremely closely together to develop accessories. Mm -hmm. And that basically came from 
the GP factory guys having these campers and wanting to add some stuff and they just build really good stuff. So there is some good synergy there. So, um, back to the Molly plate. So these ones are Alucab, cab. Those ones are GP, but these are the ones that I recommend, um, to start with for every build. I didn't, and they can probably go back or you can find a picture and maybe throw it in the video of yeah. what the camper looked like. Um, that's how we attach the propane tank. That's how you can attach cherry cans. Um, it's a Molly plate, right? So it's kind of, the options are endless. And then also there's a lot of holes, right? So you can use either some of those holes or all of those holes to attach things like um, propane tank holder or jerry cans. Um, this other side, you guys can see, um, I don't have one. And that's to allow clearance for my big tire. Um, so I have a 35 inch tire and that was custom fabricated by a local guy. Um, but the, the door does hold, it says 33, it'll hold a 34. Um, this is a 35, so I did a little bit of a custom mount where it's offset. But if that molly plate was there, it would force my door open a little bit more. Hmm. So okay. that's the reason why I don't run the molly plate. I've thought about doing like a partial one up here just to have it a little bit more consistent. But I think this is just cleaner. Um, and I like the function of my door being able to open 100%. Um, and the tire kind of acts as a stop too, which is, which is nice. And uh, I guess the tire mount would be another one specifically for you that I think you should get, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna get rid of that ultra swing that you love, but like, you're gonna save a bunch of weight because of that. Okay. Like the ultra swing, the way you have it built out, it's probably about 100 pounds. And the tire carrier is, the, you know, that's on here, is about 10 pounds, 15 pounds. Um, so you'll save a lot of weight that way. Um, so some other stuff uh, that we offer, right? So this right here is a water spigot. Um, I'll do it on the shop floor real quick, but it's all gravity fed. So you just pull a tab. Um, and if you walk around with me, George, um, you can see the, the 13 gallon LU cup tank right here. Um, the really cool thing about it is it's built really well. So there's baffles inside, which is going to keep you from feeling the water swaying as much when you're driving off road. It's going to break up kind of like a wave that's going across. Um, it's also going to add strength to the water tank itself. Um, and then it's occupying a space that really is difficult to utilize. So instead of you having the jerry cans loose and whatnot, um, you can do the water tank. So this is another one that we sell quite a bit of. We sell a lot of the screen kits, um, that table, the tables in the back, the molly plates. Like those are the things that people typically start with. Um, the water tank bags is something that I added somewhat recently. Um, it gives the water tank a little bit more of a finished look. It's not just a bag. There's actually um, some metal back here, um, it's aluminum, and that holds the structure of the bags and it also bolts on. So you're not gonna have anything falling off from like a Velcro standpoint. Um, and you know, I have my ARB deflator here. Um, I've got like a toiletry kit for me, toiletry kit for the wife, and then for the dog. Um, keep headlamps up there, keep extra charging cables and some extra lights. Um, and it's just super convenient, right? I can reach over here and I can grab certain things. I can grab my tire deflator. Um, I really like these. But again, like you can start with just the water tank then you can add this later. Or you can just start with nothing and, you know, rock cherry cans. It's kind of a cool thing. You build it to kind of whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any questions right now? No, not yet. Okay. Um, so we can go and we can look at the awning, right? Which people watch you, they know the awning. Yeah. Um, so the 270 degree Ali Gab awning, same exact one that was on George's truck previously attached to his tent. Um, the mounts are super beefy, extremely secure. Um, and to give you guys perspective on like how strong this thing is, um, people have rolled their canopy campers before, and the only thing that had to be replaced was the brackets for the awning. Uh, wow. The rest of the camper was fine. Um, as far as the awning goes, so it's gonna attach to these points. Um, when we install it, we seal the holes. There's some reinforced backing plates inside to add strength. Um, and one of the really cool things, and it's hard to show you guys in the shop, but uh, you can actually makes a rain gutter. And so that's a channel that goes right here. And so when the awning's deployed, you're left with a little bit of a gap here. But in the rain, you don't want to have kind of water pouring into your camper. And you slide that in, velcro it onto the awning, um, and the water drains naturally off, and you can climb in and out without getting wet. So if you do get the awning, I always tell people to get the, uh, the rain gutter. Makes a lot of sense. And it's just insurance. Like I pulled mine up. I think I have mine right here. Yeah, I keep mine folded up and kind of attached to my fridge. Mm -hmm. It takes up no space, um, and it's just nice to have. Um, so 
Yeah, I think that's you know the general portion of some of the Audi Camp products. Um, there's also the really cool fireplace, which I think you're getting excited for, and the wife's probably excited for too. <laughs> um, so that fireplace, and I don't know if you want to fill some B-roll in with this or something like that. It might be easier. Uh, Let's go on that side and show them. Okay. You want to light it and stuff too? Ask him. Uh, I guess <laughs> I can light it for you guys, or we can, I don't know, do it maybe with some better lighting. So I actually have this one locked. Hang on a second. Yeah. Speaking of, that's, that's, something it's, I typically, that's a good thing. I, I typically point that out, actually. Yeah. Um, is that it is lockable. And because the Alu Cab has a, we'll call it like this diamond plate, like rugged look, mm -hmm. most people don't realize it's camp stuff. Yeah. Um, so like, don't want to open it. I lead my truck. Don't get me, guys. A lot of you in SoCal. <laughs> um, I leave my truck open quite a bit and don't lock stuff, and I'm not worried about it. Like honestly. Yeah. Um, I think it's a pretty good deterrent. Like, it's also gonna make your truck look like someone that doesn't need to be messed with. So. <laughs> um, so over here, guys, on this side. Um, so it's a Dickinson Marine fireplace. Um, this is originally designed for sailboats and uh, it's incredibly safe and it's extremely efficient. So there is a, a 12 volt connection that runs a little computer fan down below here. That computer fan is gonna pull air in and you have this isolated burn chamber where there's gonna be a flame and I'll light it for you guys in a second. But essentially that flame is heating up this area of the fireplace and uh, that fan's pulling the air through, heating the air and coming out of the spent. And so what you're left with is just extremely dry, hot air. Um, and so I said dry, um, when you do camp in it and you have the heater running, it's like chapstick up, like bring a bottle of water up there because it yeah. will dry you out. Um, like our dog ends up having like dandruff after camping because it's so dry. <laughs> um, the really nice thing about that is you're never wiping your tent down with condensation. Yeah. Um, that little towel that I have on the back when I cook and I dry my dishes and stuff is dry in the morning. If you, you know, had a wet shirt or something like that, or had to wash a stain out of like the baby's clothes, it'll be dry in the morning mm. uh, because the heater does so much work. So um, Dickinson makes this, the chimney that you see here and on the exterior of the camper and the fit kit to get it to work with the truck um, is made by GP Factor. Um, so that allows it to fit. It comes with a chimney that needs to be modified. Um, it's a pretty extensive install. It just takes a lot of time. Um, and you've got to undo some welds and like the original chimney cap, but this is automotive exhaust right here and it's dual piped. So there's an inlet and an outlet. So as far as carbon monoxide goes or fumes and whatever, it's mm -hmm. incredibly safe because all the exhaust goes out and it's pulling fresh air in. So you're not burning any oxygen from inside of the camper. Um, so like if you're playing with fire with your buddy heater, right? And you've got that diesel heater now Yeah. Um, that works really well. So you could rock that for the time being because you have it until maybe you want to do the fireplace. Mm -hmm. That's a good option. Um, the first trip we ever did with the truck, um, the, when I first bought this, guys, I had zero accessories. I didn't even have the molly plates. Yeah. I had zero accessories. I did the electrical myself, um, but I had no interior. Um, and we took an 11-day trip, um, and we used a buddy heater uh, a couple nights. Yeah. Uh, but I bought the carbon monoxide detector on the trip, and it was really close to being an unhealthy amount. Um, I mean, like you're laughing, but like it's it's true, dude. It was I want to say like 28, 28 parts per million. I um, mean, I think they were saying like forty is unsafe. So yeah, just... I'm laughing because uh, I used to use a buddy heater, and I know how sketch that can that can be. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so we've got the heater. We can jump into the electrical. Yeah. Um, the goose gear we kind of talked about. So again, even the goose gear can be built as you go. Um, when we do our electrical installs, we like to locate the battery and we typically do a lithium battery in that first cubby over there. And actually the customer in the background with the, uh, the power wagon, um, they're starting with a partial goose gear build out so that we can put the battery there, protect it, hide it, give you a place to climb up into bed um, as a step. And then later they're gonna add more modules to it. So mm -hmm. the goose gear stuff's very modular. Um, I can walk you around and kind of maybe you can show them. Um, so, uh, can I steal the camera from you? Yeah. Um, so if you guys look here, right, this is a drawer unit. Um, the drawer units are um, more expensive than these and they also add more weight, but 
there's a lot of organization to it. You can run double drawers, but as you can see, the drawer protrudes past the door frame, and I just wanted more space. Um, the utility cabinets are cool. So like the one that George just opened up, um, the drawer acts as a wall and kind of divides the drawer and that utility cabinet from each other from a storage standpoint. This one, there is no wall in between, so you can slide really long objects. Um, through the top into the sides. So for a while I was keeping like a standard camp chair in there. Um, and then you've got the bulkhead here. Um, and that bulkhead basically behind it, you guys will be able to see, I've got a ton of stuff stored back there. Um, I've got floor jacks, I've got recovery gear, I've got boots, a shovel, chairs, toilets, um, and all that stuff kind of lives back there stealth and secured so it's not flying around in the bed. Um, and it keeps your, your area clean, right? So like, one of the things that I tell people um, from like the canopy camper standpoint is that it's livable, right? And you have this livable space. Um, so I want you to imagine like if you had to move the tiles around up there, um, if you didn't have everything kind of hidden and you've got the bags on the floor and whatnot, you just don't have that space on a five foot bed to walk around. Yeah. But like when you climbed in, right? And like you've been in here before, it's shocking how much space you have. Um, if you are kind of doing the utility cabinet thing or the goose gear setup, um, I, I really like the bench. That's where we sit and we hang out. Um, but again, you kind of build as you go and some people just kind of want a blank slate and maybe they want to build their own interior. They can. Um, yeah, I want to build mine pretty slow. Um, you know, to document the whole entire thing because you know, I'm sure it gets expensive. Yeah, it's uh... <laughs> But definitely, I mean, I'm gonna, for sure, like you said, the table, I think this is gonna be useful for me, especially with the baby and, and just having that water. Um, yeah, man, this is sick. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I, I think, um, yeah. Some of you guys probably know me from before, right? I didn't have Tiny Rig and yeah. um, people thought that I bought this camper and was hyping it because I want to sell them mm -hmm. and that's not it. Like, I think you're going to realize right away as soon as you get in this, like we've camped with like Joe, he was in one of your last videos. And yeah. That one too. Um, I've had been at camp with him and he, you know, you get into the industry, you think you're going to camp more and you actually don't. And so when you finally get it to camp, it's really nice. And like, he got to use his camper for like the second time ever. Yeah. And he was just chilling and looking inside for stuff and comes out and just screamed. I effing love my camper. Yeah. Um, it gives you that feeling. It's just so easy. It's pricey, but it's like you look at it and it's how much convenience does it add? How often do you get to get out more? Um, how much more comfortable is it from your family? Yeah. Right. Um, and then it's one of those things where like, I can honestly say we don't have issues with them, right? There's no warranty issues. So you're going to go, you're going to camp and you're never going to worry about anything breaking. Everything's just going to work. Hmm. Um, you know, you're not fooling around with stuff. Every place, everything has a home in the camper. Yeah. And that's one of the feedbacks that one of our buddies, Casey, has said too, right? Is like, it's just the most dialed setup that's out there. It really is. So you pay a lot, but you get a lot. Yeah. Um, do you have any questions, George? No, man. I'm just excited. Let's, let's talk about the goods here. <laughs> yeah, so um, there is a digital version. Um, so like if you were to call us, guys, and you were to say like, hey, I want to build out a camper, like I want an estimate. We would start off by sending you this build sheet, um, answering any questions you have. And, you know, a lot of times we hear like, I'm sorry, we're taking so much of your time. They're expensive campers. So we're going to spend a lot of time with you guys. Um, you know, from the start, um, we've got standard five foot bed. Um, it's going to come standard with the black finish. That's what's available. They're producing the most of them. Um, so we would, it's already got a check mark for silver, but we'll do black for George. Um, we do have a destination fee, which is not optional. Um, that's basically the cost to get it from South Africa to the U.S. and then to the shop. Um, and then we have the vehicle fitment kit. So that's that portion that I showed you guys at the start. That's going to allow it to fit to each specific vehicle. So for George, we've got fit kit Toyota Tacoma 2005 plus. So we'll check that one off. Um, I'm going to cross that out just so it's easier to see. And then so George from an accessory standpoint, we talked about the table slide and the table. Did you want to do that? I do, yeah. Okay, so we'll check both of those. Um, that's the GP factor one? No, that's the table that's going to slide into Oh, it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you still want to do that one, though? Yeah, right? let's do it, yeah. Okay, 
um, rear molly plates. Those are those Alucab ones. I don't know if you want to kind of point the camera at them real quick. So those are the ones that we put the propane tank on. Yeah, I'll do um, one, like the left. Yeah. Okay. So those are actually sold in a set. <laughs> oh my God. So you got to do both, unfortunately. Um, if you guys need one, a left one, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um, shower cube. So that's actually something that I don't have on my truck that I'm going to be adding pretty soon here. Okay. Um, and we can maybe another video or something we can show on that stuff. Okay. Um, but it's basically a, you know, a lot of people have those pop-up showers or bathrooms that they can change in or put a toilet in or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, that's built into the truck. It okay. drops out kind of like an awning. It's got some weight on it. It's really cool. Um, so then we have the, uh, the shadow awning mounting brackets, which you'd have to get if you want the shadow awning. Did you want to do the shadow yeah, awning? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And then we have that shadow awning gutter. And again, that can be added later if you want, but it's $129. I, it's insurance. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, and then we have the spare wheel bracket. Um, this was something that, again, like it can go up to a 34, George. I know you just put 35s on your truck. Yeah. Um, I would recommend probably seeing if we can get the local fabricator who did mine to do yours. Okay. Um, so I'd hold off on that. Um, canopy camper water tank. So that's $699. Did you want to do that? Yeah, the water tank. Yeah, let's okay. see the water tank. Um, canvas bags. So those are those bags I showed you on the water tank. Uh, you can add those later or you can start with them. Yeah. I think we'll add those later. Okay. Um, screen kits for the for the sides. Um, you can either do one or two on the sides. Do you want to do any of those? What do you recommend? Um, I would say at least start with one. Like summer's coming up, dude. You're going to want to have this thing ready for summer. And okay. it's just going to keep things cooler. I would say at least start with one. Yeah. Um, if it gets hot, that's something that's in stock pretty easily and we can install it fairly quick for you. Okay. Um, so we'll do one of those. Um, and then we have the rear door screen kit, which I recommend that one for sure. Okay. Um, that just makes getting in and out of the camper a little bit easier at camp without letting bugs in. Yeah. Do you think this one will be recommended too? The one, or we can do that later. Which one? The, the wheel bracket? No, for the uh, water tank. The water tank canvas bag? Yeah. I really like it. Um, Cause but, this one doesn't have the bags up top like mine did, huh? Like my three point one. It does bag. have the pouches or the, the pouches up there. Oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. So you've got all those up there. Okay. Um, and those come standard. Um, the difference of this one though, like your tent has a white interior. Mm -hmm. The black is this one's black on side, inside. Okay. So the bags probably stood out less to you. Got it. Um, and again, dude, it's going to be the darkest tent in the world. <laughs> um, so then you've got canopy camper side door grid. It's something that I don't have. It's essentially a molly plate for the side doors. Okay. Um, so they make those and then GP actually makes them. And you can kind of choose your design. Um, the GP stuff is higher quality material. It's got like a prettier design. Mm -hmm. However, Alucab, kind of like everything they do, it's more industrial. Yeah. Um, but it uses, it allows more surface area. So I actually like the Alucab one better. I'm like one of the rare few. Um, but that's something I would say again, George, like we're getting up there in budget. Hold yeah. off on that stuff and okay. add it later. Um, so we'll flip it over and then we've got the GP factor side window kits. So this is something that's in a box waiting for me to install it. Um, we've done it on another customers already. Um, these are kind of where those Molly plates go on the side that mm -hmm. we were just talking about, but you're going to have a window instead. Okay. So essentially it's uh, right here. Yeah. We're going to cut a hole through right here, pretty much about the size of a pizza box. Um, and the, the window is designed for the Marine industry. So it's a really, really nice high quality window. It's tinted. Um, we seal it up really well. So that's something again, you can add later. Yeah. Um, it's nice because it is somewhat like a cave in here mm -hmm. and not a, you don't always want a cave. So if you're someone who's got like the canvas right here and you do the window, you yeah. still have that privacy. You just drop the canvas and it, it'll block it out too. So I would say potentially add that later, George. Yeah, um, and and I just I told you earlier that I wanted that, but yeah, I definitely see the numbers going up, so I think we can do that later. Okay. Um, rear molly plates for fireplace. So they actually sell a molly plate kit that's already cut and trimmed to go around the fireplace. Mm -hmm. You don't need that mm -hmm. because you're going to end up having your spare tire there. Right. Um, so then we've got a propane tank mount by Expedition <laughs> Essentials that um, is on here. Um, on my truck, I actually have the power tank one. Yeah. which I prefer. It's a little lower profile. The Expedition Essentials one comes with a lock and it's powder coated. It's just a bit more money. Yeah. But with the price of powder coating and the lock, you're probably neck and neck. Okay. I prefer this one just because it's a little lower profile. Yeah. Uh, but Expedition Essentials makes great stuff. We sell a lot of them. People really like them. Okay. Um, so 
That one, you had the power tank one before, George. I don't know if you want to do that power tank one or the Expedition Essentials one. Um, and if you want to think about it, that's one of the things is the big thing with this, right, is the camper is what holds up everything. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll tell a customer, get your deposit down on the camper so that your order's in the queue and we can finalize some of those little details. A little later. You can think about it. Okay. Um, so that's one of the ones I would say, if you already know what you want, let me know. Um, He's pressuring me right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there is no pressure if you want to start with this thing it's butt naked dude you can do it i'm just kidding um so propane tank mount um fireplace kit fireplace um i know we talked about doing that um it's gonna be summer though right? yeah so like that's another thing that we'll think about it's mm -hmm. kind of it's summer i'd tell you go screen kits over fireplace because yeah. you don't need to cook yourself at night in the summer mm -hmm. um so i would say hold off on these for now um then you've got canvas bags at the front panel, canvas bags on the rear door, um, canvas, mesh, canvas mesh bags between the rear and side doors. So I personally don't sell a lot of those. One is because the canvas bag at the front panel and the rear door, I'm sorry, the front panels, is where the electrical panel goes and the fireplace. Mm. So you can't really use those anyways. Yeah. The canvas bags on the rear door is where GP Factor's Molly plates go. So okay. I prefer the Molly plates because I can go on Amazon and I can buy this bag for like 12 bucks. Yeah. And I take the measurements of the stuff I'm going to throw in it, pick out the right bag on Amazon or Blue Ridge Overland or whoever it is, right? Um, and get stuff that fits your thing specifically. Um, and then you can kind of tailor make it, right? You can put your first aid kit up there. You can do your golf towel that I do for drying dishes and stuff. Yeah. And then when I cook, I do, I drop my table, I unzip this bag and all my stuff there and you'll love this tour. oh that's cool i still got the hot sauces from oh there. there you go <laughs> <laughs> best right. salsa in the world guys so i really like this and i think this was actually huge i had all this stuff in my drawers right there yeah which drawers are really organized but like i saved a ton of drawer space so this bag is a little expensive but it's just super functional mm -hmm. so i would say no on the canvas bags for the door get the molly plates build it out the way you want it right okay uh, yeah um, so no go on front panel, no go on the rear door, no go on the, between the rear and side doors, uh, GP factor rear drop table, single width. Um, so this one's the big full size table. You saw, I used to have the two small ones. Yeah. Um, I much prefer this now that I have it because of the surface area that you get. Yeah. The other one was really cool because it was divided and split. And so like, if you're going to make, just take out your jet boil and make some coffee. You could just drop one table out and it gives you a little more room to get in and out of the camper. But I ended up finding that I was still stabbing my butt with the other table. Yeah. So the full size table to me makes more sense. You get more surface area. Um, yeah, I, I would go full size. Um, like I okay. Here. Yeah. And I need a table like that. So I think the last one we talked about was those Molly plates, George. Um, then we have that folding step for camper side. So that one's, I don't have one here to show you guys, but we can walk over to the side of the camper real quick. Um, and this will actually help you guys understand the construction of the camper. Um, so this channel right here, this is the alu cap load bar that is holding your tent onto your canopy right now. And so the entire frame of the camper is made of that. So it's incredibly strong and it runs here too. So you end up with a hardware channel inside. So you can slide M8 hardware all over this thing. M8's metric size. Um, so like over here, if you wanted to put kayaks on the roof, George, um, you can remove this rubber and GP Factor makes a step that basically is magnetic. It's billet aluminum and it holds up flat against this, but you can pull it down. So like if anyone's ever seen like those Jeep steps that go on like the doors mm -hmm. and bolt on, it's similar to that. I'll fix okay. that later. Um, so I would say again, that's an accessory you can add later, George. Um, and it's something you would install on your own probably. Um, but that's hundred bucks if you wanted that. Um, and then we had that wood cutting board table that we were just talking about. So. Again, we can mark that, and if it's over your budget, we can take it off if needed. Okay. Um, but I know you really like that one. Um, spare wheel bracket, we said we're going to kind of get that one custom. And then there's some electrical stuff over here. Um, there's an Alucab can crusher, which again is just a kind of a novelty item if you want it. It's a Alucab made like a beer can crusher or whatever it is. Um, and then you've got some load bars. So those load bars go on the roof. Okay. I know, George, we've talked about doing some solar on your roof. Yeah. I like to use the load bars to protect the solar wires. Um, just in case you're going under a tree or something like that, it's going to act as a shield. Um, but you can add those later, too. So um, there's the jerry can holder. So if you weren't going to do the propane tank, 
You can do a jerry can, you can use it for fuel or water. Um, and then the last one's uh, push button lock covers. So those are some covers that'll go over the locks that, and the latches on the camper. I want to get those for sure. Yeah, so those are nice to have because like we have, you know, poke on our wheels and our offset. Yeah. So we're shooting mud up the side of our trucks. Um, and these have gotten pretty gummed up and you mm -hmm. have the pressure washing them and stuff. But if you get the latch covers, uh, they're inexpensive. It's 48 bucks for the full set. Yeah. Um, so throw those on there and it'll protect them for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's basically it, George. I think we could talk a lot more about electrical options. Like I said, we have like those three options. Mm -hmm. um, but for you, because you do YouTube and film a bunch of stuff, um, maybe that's a separate video and we can walk them through it. Yeah. That's basically it, guys. That's pretty much every accessory. Um, if you were to come in uh, at this point, you take your build sheet, um, put it into the software, and uh, start to add your install costs to each of the components. Um, it's super trans transparent. It says exactly how long each install takes us. Um, the guys in the shop have iPads running and tablets running that's timing them on their install. Um, and that's what everything's based off of. So we've got our hourly labor rate and you guys get an estimate from us. It'll say like awning, awning bracket, awning install, subtotal. And like I said, there's no pressure to have us do the install. Um, I would say if it says it's going to take us three hours to do something, assume it's going to take you six. Um, three hours, you know, with us being experienced and whatnot and having little ways to make things easier saves a lot of time. So again, it comes down to, do you want us to install it? It'll be perfect. Or maybe you're going to work on it, you know, over the course of the weekend or something, um, and put stuff together, but no pressure on that either way. Um, yeah. So I think we got to build you an estimate, George. Thank you, sir. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Um, I'm so glad we did this. Yeah. Just because it gives me a video to watch again and hopefully it helps you guys uh, either build out your setup or now you know who to come to if you need something done or if you have questions. Um, I feel like I always say this, but I'll be putting his stuff in, his, in, my, in my description. <laughs> you, guys, you guys know this guy. Instagram, Seek Out Beauty, Instagram, Tiny Rig, yep. Tiny Rig Co. So yeah, you can ask for Daniel. You can ask for Tiffany. Tiffany's better at it than I am, guys. Honestly, <laughs> she's, she's who you want to talk to. Sounds good. And also, I think we'll probably come back and do another video once we start getting into the electrical uh, portion of it. That way you guys also get an idea what goes behind that and possibly even another spec sheet. Um, or no. Yeah, we do like a little quick PDF diagram type thing. Okay. Um, with, again, different costs. Everything's upgradable. Okay. So you can kind of build your way. Um, but I think in your truck, we'll probably be doing some red art stuff and okay. some sunflower stuff so that yeah. you got plenty of juice. Um, similar to my setup. Okay. Sounds good. Well, if you guys like this type of video, this raw, unedited, just this is what we're doing today. Um, it's on his cell phone. He's in selfie mode right I now. I know. It's, it's, it's been a while since I've done a video on a cell phone. So I think the quality is actually pretty good. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys. Any, any last minute His words? wife's calling, so he's got to go, guys. I got to go, guys. <laughs> All right. So I answered the call. Made it quick because I want this guy to tear it down and see how fast he. Uh... Pro tip though, keep this strap out of the side of this. Uh huh. Because when I pull this down, it's going to pull the camper in. Okay. Uh, did you close the bed, George? No, you did not. You made my life difficult. So. Climb Hope you guys get inspired. You don't need a fancy camera to do a uh, video. You can use your phone. Just a fancy camper. <laughs> so then I gotta close this panel up here, the small one. Okay. And then you can leave the screen in here. It's not an issue. And then it's just pulling it down. So. Oh, you gotta do it again, dude. What? Just do it again. Yeah. You can add this and make it all fancy? Yeah. No, I just wanted you to do it again. <laughs> Get a wide shot. And then stuff this in there. And that strap that went all the way across pulled the sides in, so there's not going to be any fabric on the sides. So that was it. Last up. Driving a freeway at 70 miles per hour with it open. <laughs> Put your case back in and close the door. And 
and that's it. Sick. I can't wait to have one. And like for real, right? So like, look, there's nothing sticking out. And you guys saw like, I have a ton of bedding in there. Yeah. And it still closes in like 20 seconds. Sick, dude. Hey, Georgie. Thanks. See you later.